I'm Lucas. I'm Mateo. I'm Suel. I'm Winnie. And welcome to this month's episode of High School Happenings. To kick things off, Gleave is hosting a resource fair upcoming in May, and High School Happenings got a chance to go check out one of their planning sessions. Let's go see how it went. Thanks, Mateo. I'm here at Gleave Collegiate Institute to check out their SHISM program in the not-for-profit sector. Let's go learn more about it. So the SHISM program here at Gleave is um, focusing in nonprofit studies. So we have students who are engaged in uh, co-op placements in places like the United Way or um, SOS Children's Villages or Oxfam. Um, so it's just kind of like an array of nonprofits um, throughout Ottawa. This coming May, we're planning a sustainable development week. Um, we're kicking it off with an assembly to kind of raise awareness and raise the conversation about the sustainable development goals brought up by the UN within our school. Um, we're dividing each day in uh, separate goals, so we're focusing on goals each day with different activities each day um, to help accomplish and raise awareness on those goals. Um, it's also going to feature um, a resource fair where we're going to have collected uh, a bunch of nonprofits from around Ottawa, so we're going to have groups like Amnesty, we're going to have groups like Oxfam, um, and environmental groups, all different kind of groups that are really championing uh, the sustainable development goals. And then we're also going to be having a social justice slam poetry night, so we're going to um, have local slam poets who are really uh, using their slam poetry for good and for social justice. So all together we're just really hoping to raise awareness about these really important goals set out by the UN. Uh, so what goes into planning an event? Uh, a lot of work actually. Um, these students are working really hard, uh, contacting different organizations. Um, some have the uh, connection right now that they're in a co-op placement uh, with different uh, NGOs. So they're working right now to um, get connections made and we've got a resource fair where students will be invited, um, students from throughout the school will be invited down to the resource fair and different groups and organizations and hopefully a couple of clubs from within the school uh, will display um, sort of what their roles are um, and how they are connected to the sustainable development goals and hopefully again um, just showcase a little bit about what um, students can do individually or as groups or how to incorporate uh, some of the sustainable development goals into their own clubs here at the school. For me um, I'm planning on taking sustainable development and environmental sustainability at Dalhousie next year and um, through Schism, it's like directed my goals with like life and stuff and through that uh, myself and two others, uh, three others were invited to the United Nations uh, Youth Assembly on Sustainable Development. I am very fortunate that my role is um, to help facilitate what uh, the students are um, doing in terms of what our major event this year is um, for our um, Awareness Week. Uh, so this was a big undertaking to plan something for five days, um, speak with a lot of different organizations and get a lot of stuff organized um, for the week, uh, and then throughout the year doing um, a few of the other tasks that are involved with an SHSM program, um, coordinating first aid. Um, we're going to be um, doing uh, a tour at Algonquin College, um, so just organizing a couple of the um, really fun and neat opportunities that the SHSM program offers uh, to students who partake. Yeah. So that was our question. Sounds like they have a lot of great events in store and it seems like a great program. Back to you guys. Wow, what an amazing program and it looks like Gleave has quite the week planned in May. Stay tuned after the break where we get to check out some amazing artworks done by some Colonel By students. Welcome back. Each year Colonel By makes an art show called the Vernissage. Let's go see what it's all about. Thanks, Zoelle. Now we're here at Colonel By's annual Vernissage Art Show, where we showcase the school's most talented artists and their works. Let's go check it out. Uh, 
Uh, I came to the art show because I wanted to see some of the great pieces that Colonel By students here have made. Uh, they've been working really hard on it all year, so I wanted to check it out. So I think it's important for everyone to try art or to do art because you never know how good at it you might be at it until you try. Uh, some of these kids, they might tell you, oh, I didn't really like how this turned out, or um, I could have done this better, but in real estate, they're pretty fantastic pieces. This is my second art show. In grade 9, I just had a small painting in the hallway, so it's definitely a big upgrade. <laughs> Over here, I have an abstract piece. So it has a lot of pinks and blues, and it's called Fairy Floss, because in Australia, cotton candy is called Fairy Floss, so it kind of correlates with the colors. And I had a lot of fun with this piece. And then over here, I have a piece about a heart, and it has an abstract take on the piece, but heart, and like the Heart Institute is really personal to my heart with my family and things like that. So I really wanted to make, and there's a lot of symbolism with hearts and stuff, so I really wanted to make a piece that had to do with my family and the Heart Institute. <laughs> uh, so this year, I've made this piece piece here, I made two sculpture pieces and a video work. Uh, this is probably my favorite piece just because of the meaning behind it. Uh, so my intention with it was to normalize the idea of transgender bodies in a cisnormative society. Um, and I thought that it was an interesting way to per like portray that to a larger audience. So that was, yeah. I really like this one. I found that a lot of my artworks this year were more political, so they didn't really meet my theme last year, so I kind of ended up having to separate them. Um, I really like a really bold piece I made this year about racism. Um, it was very hard at first because yeah, because I was scared of, uh, of writing all the slurs in the backgrounds of the faces. And however, like a lot of people like encouraged me that it would be better to make uh, a bolder statement about the issues. So. so I made two pieces. Um, both of them are up on the stage over there. Uh, I did them in a highlighter on wood panels. So you can't see them in normal lighting, but if you add a black light or a blue, uh, dark light, whatever you want to call them, they're visible. They're two giant drawings. Um, they took a while to do. Uh, they're hard to plan out, but I think they turned out pretty well. I would say the most shocking thing would be the iPhone with the screw in it that's just dripping blood. I feel like that's a, a massive statement for today's society. But one of my favorite ones is the Donald Trump bob Donald Trump bobblehead. I really like that one. But I think that's the iPhone is the weirdest one here today. Uh, right now, I'm really loving Leah's stuff. Uh, she did a fantastic job with some of the string, and her uh, art with the hands are, is just fantastic. I really admire a lot of Jessica's and Cece's pieces because well, Cece helps me a lot with my art and stuff. She's very inspirational, and Jess's paintings are really accurate and great as well. Cass's drawings are really proportioned very well, so that's good. And Jamila, she has a big painting of a woman's face, so that one's really nice as well. So. Uh, I'd probably do something with photography. I just I enjoy photography myself, so. You, the imagine it's really testing your imagination and showing what you can do, and it's it'd be a waste not to try. Definitely stay in art class. It's a really great way to channel creativity, and the teachers are great, and the students are great around. Like everyone has a great support system, and you're really allowed to do like whatever you want with your art pieces. You can, it's a great way to express yourself, and just really stick with it. Even when you feel discouraged, like, you'll get through. <laughs> it's fun. They should definitely do the art show. It's so much fun. Like, of course, you have to, you have to miss a lot of school and like set up everything. It takes a lot of work, but it's a great way to also show off what you've made. Like, especially if you have parents who who uh, might not be as open to the idea of doing art throughout high school. If you want to show them what you're what you're capable of doing and what other people in older grades have done as well with this time, I think it's a great way to to show it off to them and to teachers, peers, and stuff like that. a great time here at Colonel By's annual Renaissance Art Show. This school obviously has a lot of talent. Back to you, Zoel. Wow, what an amazing showcase. I even have trouble drawing a stick man. Next, let's go check out some exciting junior boys volleyball action between the Kareen Wilson Wildcats and the Louis Riel Rebel. 
in an East Division matchup between the number two seed Louis Viel Rebel against the number 11 seed Kareen Wilson Wildcats at Kareen Wilson. The Rebels were looking to increase their winning streak to four games, and the Kareen Wilson Wildcats were looking for their first win of the season. And into the first set we go. We see Noah Messina start off the game with a serve to the Kareen Wilson Wildcats. The Wildcats were trying to make a comeback in this set, however the Rebels attacks led by Noah and Messina were too powerful and would add up until the Rebels would take the first set. In the second set, the Rebels came out strong with powerful serves to give themselves an early and comfortable lead. After the timeout called by Kareen Wilson, they were looking to counter and possibly mount a comeback against the Rebels. Every single Kareen Wilson counterattack would be then countered by Louis Riel, who would control their attacks and mount one of their own. Start off strong and extend the lead as the set progressed.
Two very crucial players to the Rebels' success are number 11, Noah Messina, and number 4, Jacob Matheson. They showed great leadership and ability on the volleyball court and really helped contribute to their team's success. And showed leadership while on the volleyball court. The Wildcats would mount a small comeback, but the Rebels would end up winning the final set 25 to 13 and would win the game three sets to none. They would prove why they are the number two seed. With this win, that made them have four wins in a row and only one loss on the season to Franco Cité, who they'll be looking to play in the playoffs. So what are your weaknesses as a team and what do you think you could incorporate into practice to get better? given the fact that you've had so much success. Our team is really young, we're all nine graders. I don't think we can improve on that, but like another thing, like we get discouraged a lot for like a, for small things. I think if we just get more encouraged after every play, like it'll make our team better. So how do you feel your teams come together thus far throughout the season? There's been some pretty good progression. Uh, we do have a young young uh, team this year with, uh, with no grade 10s, so um, Kind of battled with uh, being a little bit less physical than, than other teams and a lot of progression has has been happening since the very beginning uh, our main focus has been on um, not the results but more so the, the process and i think the kids are starting to really attach to that um, and finding a way to persevere without too much thinking about the end result and more about how we do things and, uh, and that seems to be a key part to our season this year the Rebels have three more games this season against Lisger, Glebe, and St. Pete's. All three teams show a lot of promise and will surely be a challenge for the Rebels. Kareen Wilson also has three more games left and will be looking to end the season on a positive note by winning them. Wow, what an awesome game. Congratulations to both teams for a great effort. Spring is in the air, which can only mean one thing, theater season. Stay tuned after the break where we got to check out Colonel By's production of Once Upon a Mattress. Theater season is in full swing. Let's go check out Colonel By Secondary School's musical production of Once Upon a Mattress. I'm here at Colonel By Secondary School for the opening night of their musical performance, Once Upon a Mattress. A twist on the classic fairy tale, The Princess and the Pea, this musical is sure to make you laugh. Everyone's really excited for this play. We've been spending a lot of time on it, a couple of months, and it's uh, coming along, along really nicely. Tonight's our opening night, and we're all really excited. Hopefully, it's going to be a good show. I've been doing musical theater for a while and last year I was in the play which was Legally Gone and it's like it's a lot of rehearsals go into it like some nights we're here until like 10 or 11 so like it's it's a big commitment but it's a lot of fun because you meet like I came in here being a grade 9 last year and I got to meet all the grade 12s and the grade 11s and I became really close with them as well so it creates like a really nice support system and like a little family because you guys all share the same passion. So a bunch of students uh, work together to make this production available. We do it every year. Um, it's been a lot of hard work, but it's definitely been worth it. <laughs> I've been in the musical pro theater program here at Colonel By for four years. Uh, I started in grade nine and ten in the class, and uh, last year I did my first show, which was Legally Blonde, and now here we are doing Once Upon a Mattress. May I please ask this question, please? What was the middle name of the daughter-in-law of the best friend of the blacksmith that forged the sword that killed the beast? The middle name? The middle name? The daughter-in-law? In-law? You have 30 seconds. Oh, pass. Please, please pass. Do you speak, m'lady? I... 20 seconds. Oh, she's a pretty little thing. I wish her success. 10. 
job to all the performers at Colonel Bay Secondary School. I can't wait to see what you guys have in store for next year. Wow, looks like it was a great show. Thanks for watching this month's episode of High School Happenings. We'll see you later.